This is the story of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the bullwhip crack like this. Let's begin now. In a desert cave, a boy scout was hiking with his troop when he heard voices. He sneaked away and hid in the shadows where he saw four strangers looting an ancient burial site. As they dug up a beautiful jeweled cross, the scout gasped. That's the cross of Coronado. It's been lost for 400 years. When the men turned their backs, he snatched the cross, then leaped onto a horse and sped across the desert. The men hurried to their cars and roared off in pursuit. With the men just inches behind, the scout jumped a passing circus train where he tumbled into a vat of snakes, avoided a tiger's claws, and outsmarted an angry lion, then eluded the men and made his way home. There, he spoke to his father, a world-famous archaeologist, and the two of them met with the police. It was just another day in the life of young Indiana Jones. Years later, in 1941, Professor Indiana Jones was kidnapped and taken to art collector Walter Donovan. You've heard of the Holy Grail, Dr. Jones? Of course, the chalice used by Christ during the Last Supper. According to legend, whoever drinks from that cup receives eternal life. Donovan unveiled a stone tablet. This tablet is one of two markers that together tell where the Grail can be found. Indy listened intently as Donovan went on. The Grail disappeared for a thousand years before three knights found it. The first two knights were buried with the markers. The third knight stayed behind to become keeper of the Grail. We were about to find the second marker and perhaps the Grail itself when our project leader disappeared. We need someone to take his place. You have the wrong Dr. Jones. My father's the Grail scholar. I know. Your father is the man who disappeared. Indy raced to his father's house only to find it ransacked and empty. Family friend and colleague Marcus Brody helped sort through the wreckage. They even went through his mail. Mail, that's it. Indy remembered a package he'd stuffed into his pocket earlier that day, postmarked Venice, Italy. He opened the package. Dad's Grail diary. Marcus, we're going to Italy. The next day they arrived in Venice, where they met Dr. Elsa Schneider, who had been working closely with Indy's father. Elsa took them to a magnificent old library where Henry Jones had last been seen. Your father felt he was very close to finding the second knight's tomb. This is all he left behind. She handed Indy a slip of paper with the Roman numerals 3, 7, and 10 written on it. Studying his surroundings, Indy found a marble column marked 3 and a bookcase numbered 7. We're getting close to it, Elsa. But where's the 10? Just then, he noticed a pattern on the tile floor. X marks the spot. Indy pried up the tiles, and he and Elsa climbed through. Below the library, in a tunnel caked with oil, Indy found the knight's remains. Look at his shield. It's the second marker. As Indy copied the message, an orange glow filled the tunnel. Indy, the oil is catching fire. He looked up and saw a giant fireball rounding the corner, headed right toward him. They dove into the sewer and emerged through a storm drain covered with slime. Indy took a deep breath. Ah, Venice. Learning that his father was being held at the castle Brunwald in Germany, Indy made plans to go there with Elsa. Before he left, he met with Marcus, and the two of them used information from the shield to draw a map showing the Grail's location. Marcus, go to the town of Iskenderun and contact my friend Sala. He'll help you follow this map and find the Grail. Storm clouds darkened the sky as Indy and Elsa sneaked inside the castle Bullwalt. They crept down a hallway to a heavy door. He must be in here, Elsa, because it's wired. Let's go around. They broke into the adjoining room. With the rain pouring down in sheets, Indy climbed onto a ledge, then used his whip to swing through the window next door. As he crashed into the room, Henry Jones stepped out of the shadows. Junior, is that you? Don't. 
call me Junior. Suddenly, two Nazi soldiers burst in, carrying guns. An SS officer nodded at Indy. I'll take the diary now, Dr. Jones. Henry laughed in the man's face. <laughs> Do you think my son would be stupid enough to bring... He looked at Indy. You didn't. Indy nodded. Junior, I sent it home to keep it away from them. I told you before. Indy snatched one of the guns and overcame the soldiers. Don't call me Junior. They ducked into the next room, only to find Elsa held by a Nazi colonel named Vogel. Drop the gun, Dr. Jones, or she dies. Indy dropped his weapon, and Elsa rushed over to put her arms round him. She reached into his pocket, then handed the diary to Vogel. You should have listened to your father, Indy. They were taken to a room where a man sat with his back to them. When he turned round, Indy reacted with shock. Donovan. Donovan examined the diary. Elsa, the map. Where is it? I can guess. Brody has it, and he's on his way to the Grail. After tying up Indy and his father, Donovan hurried off to catch Brody, while Elsa took the diary and headed for Berlin. Left alone, Henry and Indy burned through the ropes with a lighter, then slipped out of the castle and into the hills. They hopped on a motorcycle, and Henry pointed north. We've got to reach Berlin. That's where my diary is. We don't need your diary. Yes, we do. Whoever finds the grail must face three final challenges. Booby traps. The clues to the traps are in my diary. Dan, what about Marcus? He's more important than the grail. You don't understand. The grail is the cup of eternal life. If the Nazis reach it first, they'll take over the world. Disguised as soldiers, Indy and his father traced Elsa to a Nazi rally in Berlin. Dan, she's standing right next to Hitler. When the rally dispersed, Elsa was shocked to see Indy approaching. Indy, you don't really think I'm part of this, do you? I believe in the grail, not the swastika. Who cares what you believe? Indy grabbed the diary from her and moved off into the crowd. When Indy and his father arrived at Iskender the next day, Indy's friend Sala was waiting for them. Sorry, Indy. Donovan and the Nazis beat you here. They set out across the desert this afternoon and took Mr. Brody with them. Henry set his jaw grimly. We must catch them. In this race, there is no silver medal for a second place finish. Father of Indy, do not worry. There are always shortcuts. <laughs> They rode on horseback along a mountain path through the desert. Henry spotted something through his binoculars. Junior, it's Donovan's motorcade. Marcus and Elsa are with him. Sala gave Indy a peculiar look. Junior, Indy slumped in the saddle. I like Indiana. Okay, Dad? We named the dog Indiana. We named you Henry Jones Junior. Suddenly, an explosion rocked the mountainside. Henry turned to the others. Quick! They must have found the canyon! And possibly the grail! The three men followed the sound to a magnificent canyon carved in the shape of a temple. As they stared in awe, there was a noise behind them. They turned to see a row of Nazi soldiers holding machine guns. The soldiers brought them before Donovan. Ah, Indiana Jones. And not a moment too soon. I want the grail, and you're going to get it for me. He fired a bullet into Henry's stomach. The healing power of the Grail is the only thing that can save your father now. Henry grasped his son's wrist. Remember the three challenges. They're in my diary. Taking the Grail book, Indy moved through a mass of cobwebs to a stairway inside the temple. Climbing the steps, he read the first challenge deep in thought. Only the penitent man will pass. Hmm. The penitent man kneels before God. As Indy knelt, a razor-sharp pendulum swung just inches above his head, exactly where he had been standing. Using clues from the diary, Indy made his way across a pit filled with spiders, then leaped over a deep chasm. At last, he crawled through an opening into a smaller temple filled with beautiful chalices. Kneeling before them, was an ancient knight in armor. I am the last of three knights who swore an oath to find the grail and guard it 
but that was 700 years ago. Drinking from the grail has kept me alive. At that moment, Donovan and Elsa entered the room. Donovan eyed the chalices. Which one is it, old man? You must choose, but choose wisely. For just as the true grail will bring you life, the false grail will take it from you. Donovan selected the most beautiful cup. Eternal life! He drank, and his skin withered and turned brown. Donovan sank to the floor, an ancient skeleton blackened with age. The knight looked at Indy. He chose poorly. Indy reached among the shining cups for one that was dull and rather simple. Only one way to find out. He took a drink. When nothing happened, the knight smiled. You chose wisely. Indy ran back and held the cup to his father's lips. Drink, Dad. Drink. Henry drank, and miraculously, his wound healed. Elsa dove for the cup. We've got it. Come on. The knight appeared behind them. No, the grail belongs here. It can never leave. Ignoring his warning, Elsa hurried off. As she did, the temple walls began to crumble, and the chalice was knocked into a huge crevice that yawned at her feet. She scrambled down one side. I can't reach it, Andy. He climbed onto a ledge and strained to support her. But as she lunged for the chalice, her hand slipped from his, and she went hurtling into the abyss. Elsa! Just then, the ground shifted and Indy lost his balance. Out of nowhere, a hand grasped Indy's. It was Henry, barely holding on. Indy strained to reach the grail. I can get it. No, Junior! Indy's fingers slipped, farther, farther from his father's grip. Indiana! Let it go. Indy's head snapped back. He looked into his father's eyes, then pulled himself up. As they raced from the collapsing temple, the last thing they saw was the Grail Knight. He was smiling, for the chalice, thanks to Indiana Jones and his father, was safe once again. That was the end of the story. If you'd like to hear it again, just turn the tape over.